my struggle to survive continues. Tonight, Van Helsing and Gibbons destroyed another box of my sacred earth of Transylvania. But this time, I may have destroyed them also. boxes of his native soil that we know of. And so far, we've destroyed 13. Your grandfather would be proud of us. Oh, grandfather, Hanny. Is shoulder bothering you? No, no, Hanny. I'm giving me more flack about how much we're using of the pertinent computer. Kurt, why don't we tell him who we're looking for? For the same reason we can't tell the police. They think we're a couple of loonies. Well, Kurt, looking for a vampire, are you? That's fascinating. Do you mind cleaning out your desk and using another university's facilities? The computer find anything new yet? Not yet. The cross-referencing takes forever. It took us three weeks to end up at that barn the other night. What? Uh, it's a professor of Eastern European history. He teaches down at South Bay College. So? Apparently, he only teaches night courses. Perfect course for the Count to instruct, huh? Sure. He lived in Eastern Europe for 500 years. So you can see that Crown Prince Rudolf was still anxious to spread his wild oats. And it was difficult to blame him. Princess Stephanie of Belgium was about as exciting as a stale glass of beer. <laughs> and very nearly as flat. <laughs> Poor Prince Rudolph. Made quite a scandal of himself that night in Vienna. His wedding feast. New Year's Eve, 1888.
The palace of the Emperor Franz Joseph was beautiful. The candlelight made the gold leaf on the carved woodwork seem to glow from within. The magnificent crystal chandelier caught this flickering light and scattered it prismatically like a thousand eyes. Fragrances of many exotic perfumes filled the air, commingled with the clean smell of starch and the stiff Prussian army dress uniforms. The women of the court were attired in the most exquisite gowns of velvet, deep shades of burgundy, violet, midnight blue, tiny seed pearls embroidered upon the rich material in layers. Gold and precious stones crowned their heads and tears and draped in stunning strands around their beautiful necks. It was on that night of his wedding that Rudolf met a most beautiful and enchanting young girl, Mary Vetsara. Her eyes sparkled with desire and yearning for the dashing young prince. In one week, they would be lovers. In one month, they would be dead in each other's arms in the hunting lodge at Meierling. We will continue on Thursday. That's not fair. Oh, come on, don't leave us hanging. We want to know what happened. Thursday. It's such a romantic story. Yes, but so tragic. You really have an act for making the past come alive. I want my classes to be interesting. Your description of the Imperial Palace on that New Year's Eve made me feel as though you'd actually been there. Really? This star is Alberio in the constellation of Cygnus the Swan. You see? It is at her head, her two wings, and at the tail is Dinette. Isn't Cygnus also referred to as the Northern Cross? I prefer to think of it as a swan. I'm beginning to think that you know all the stars. We haven't pointed to one yet that you can't tell us about. Well, I've done a great deal of stargazing in my time. In fact, I have just come across my old telescope. Would you like to look through it? Perhaps have some wine? Yeah, that would be terrific. OK. <laughs> Are you coming, my dear? You live nearby? Yes. going to school back east, but uh, you missed the fog, huh? <laughs> it's been really beautiful the last few nights, hasn't it? Do you think it'll be too foggy tonight to see the stars?
driving at Le Mans. I come from old man. <laughs> it's lovely. You've been teaching at the university all semester? Yes. You seem very popular. Your students are quite drawn to you. And you? I'm curious. Indeed? About your background. Your origins. I think you know a great deal about me already. Don't you, Mary? Your new hairstyle is very flattering, but it is not really you. So, you and the young Van Helsing escaped again. My compliments. You are good survivors. Will you tell me something? What is so important that you cannot leave me in peace? You killed my mother. Who was your mother? Amanda Gibbons. I will tell you something, young lady. In my lifetime, I have known many women. I have loved only a few. I loved your mother. You love nothing except the darkness. The night, yes. But you misunderstand. I do not love the night and the darkness. I am condemned to it. Do you know that I have not seen the daylight for 512 years? Can you imagine living that long and never seeing the blue of the sky? Never seeing the reflection of the sunlight on the sea? Would you not long for those things if you were deprived of them? When this curse was first placed upon my shoulders, I thought I would go insane. I tried to tear my own heart from my bosom. But gradually, I grew resigned to my destiny. There are many addictions, you know, alcohol, drugs. But the most potent is the addiction to life. To be alive. However lonely it may be. Your mother. Brought me warmth and understanding like few I have ever known. Who taught you that the constellation Cygnus the Swan is also the Northern Cross? My mother. As I thought, she loved the stars. Knew a great deal of astronomy. Many times we lay beside each other in the heather, gazing at Hercules kneeling in the heavens before us. She was a loving and gentle woman. Your mother, Amanda. <laughs> And you killed her. But I did love her. But you killed her! There is a passion within me which I cannot control. 
a passion to live, to possess. I should like to possess you, Mary. Chapter of The Curse of Dracula.